let's talk USB-C. Like I've had this conversation with friends in the past and it really feels like with the iPhone 15 coming out and that finally getting USB-C, thanks to the European Union limitation and whatever, not like Apple is gonna acknowledge that in any way, but USB-C is gonna be the predominant port for the next decade. Every portable device will have a USB-C port of some fashion, and it really feels like for a universal standard that's gonna be adopted by devices from low power to high power, from low data transfer speeds to high data transfer speeds, just buying, buying a cable that, that's supposed to work with your keyboard, even your Logitech Superlight or with the, with the new model finally supporting USB-C, finding a cable that charges and powers and transfers data for everything at the device sort of rated maximum charging speed and maximum data transfer speed, is really a difficult task. Like for example, if you go on Amazon and you just, you know, search for USB-C cable, you'll find a variety of different cables from a variety of different manufacturers that all promise in some way the same thing, but fundamentally they promise different things. If you're looking for the USB-C dream and you want a cable that powers and tra data transfers for all devices, all at their maximum speed, and you just bring one cable with yourself and that, that works for all your devices, you really need to pay attention to a couple of things when browsing Amazon. For example, these magical cables will most likely be referred to as Thunderbolt 3 or 4, and that means the same for the standard. They most likely will be able to power up to 240 watts if it actually says that it can power up to 240 watts, and they'll transfer USB at you know up to 20 gigabits a second. But those cables will most likely be shorter, they'll definitely be more expensive than a lot of the offerings on Amazon, and most people will most likely just search for USB-C cable, and then you're much more likely to come across uh, cables that's quote, uh, up to 65 watts of maximum power transfer, which might not be enough for your laptop, or you most likely will come across cables that will quote, uh, very fast transfer speeds, and then they'll say 480 megabits a second, which for the uninitiated, that's USB 2.0 speeds from the year 2000. So um, that's really no good, particularly if you use that for a for an SSD, it'll just be too slow. So you really start to get a sense that the market is confusing on purpose. And for the average person, if you're just trying to get a cable that works for everything, which you would expect to be just, you buy once and you just keep that cable around, um, it really is a fundamental challenge. And that escalates to um, other devices, like for example, power banks. I was on the market for a better power bank. I've had this Xiaomi power bank, it's 16,000 million powers. I've had this for like eight years. It's, you know, not great. It's two USB A's and one micro USB. It's on its last legs. I wanted to replace it, but then I came across the entire world of USB power and how challenging it can be to just, you know, pierce through all the fluff and actually find a device that will work for my needs. For example, if you're on a market for a charging brick because your phone didn't bring one in the box or you, your laptop has one that's way too big or only has one port or, you know, just is limited in some way, you will quickly find out that a lot of manufacturers quote uh, terms like GAN, which means uh, that uses gallium nitrate, which usually it means it's slightly more efficient and slightly smaller, but it doesn't mean much more besides that. They'll usually quote um, power transfer speeds of uh, 100 watts, 65 watts, some of them go up to 240 watts, but you have to pay attention that a lot of those, particularly the higher speeds, are often limited to multi port connected devices. Like you can plug in multiple devices and push up to 240 watts, up to 100 watts. And the same thing can be said for plugging in multiple devices into let's say a 45 watt 
power brick or a 65 watt. You can't expect to get out 65 watts from every single port. So if you're planning on powering your laptop and your tablet and your phone on like a three port 65 watt charger, maybe that's not powerful enough. And that's something that it's not very clear on the advertising. And then if you go for the power banks, like I was in the market for, I, I, I started to browse between the newer Anchor products because I knew Anchor and they, you know, they look quite fancy, I would say. They they look well built, they're quite rugged, and they have this display at the front. It will quote the actual battery capacity that's still there and the actual voltage and amperage that's being used and the watts uh, by every single port. And I thought these devices were great. This is the newer one, the Anchor Prime 27560K. It's 27,000 milliamp hours, 27,560. Then the older Anchor 737, it's uh, this guy. Um, it's slightly smaller, slightly less capacity, but at the end of the day, it felt quite similar. And then the Prime 200 watts, which is the smaller brother to this new one here. And on the surface, they all look very, very similar. This one quotes 250 watts of maximum power, this one quotes 200, and this one quotes 140. But it's again confusing in weird ways because you have to really pay attention to the fast charging protocols that are supported by every single one of them. And a combination of things can happen in the middle, like you can find one that will say 200 watts, but you only will get 200 watts if you plug in two devices at the same time that push 100 watts each. And then you also have to take in mind that uh, after five minutes, this thing will overheat and drop its power down to 50 watts per port which um, it should say in the um, specs of the device that it can't actually do it long term, but it doesn't. You should also keep in mind that um, most of these devices will support a combination of uh, USB pass-through charging or no pass-through at all. And that's something that's Again, not super clear when you're browsing. For example, the smaller one, no pass through. So if you have one device that's charging from this, you can't charge the power bank at the same time. If you plug one in and the other one will disconnect, there's nothing you can do. Then with this guy, you can actually share. So if you plug this into power uh, and then you plug a device into it, you can transfer all the power that's coming in to the other port and that's sent out to the other device. And once that device is full, then this thing will start to charge. But you're limited by the output that you're putting into the device that's charging this. And, and that's a limiting factor. This guy will do it all. If you want to charge it at 30 watts, but charge a device at 100 watts, you can do that. Um, that's something, again, not super clear when you're browsing Amazon. So the entire point of this video was much more focused on bringing some awareness to some of the confusing things that USB-C is doing at the moment. And it really feels like it's an incredible future where you'll be able to have one power bank, one USB-C cable, one wall adapter, and just power everything, all your portable devices, all at once. And it's everything, it's everywhere, all at the same time. And um, it just, it's not what's happening now. And uh, with Apple adopting it with the iPhone 15, a lot of less tech enthusiastic people are gonna be with USB-C. And I really feel like the sort of the lack of education and the lack of information on this subject will only sort of spread uh, with, with more people that are less informed uh, using it everywhere. And, um, and iPhones are a small margin of the market and a lot of Android phones have been using uh, USB-C for years, but, but th these problems are still here and these problems will not be sort of uh, fixed unless uh, people are informed that companies sort of finagle their way around uh, these standards and just call things some things that they're not. So um, yeah, recently I found a channel. I'm, I'm gonna finish the video with, with a tip, very important tip. I found a channel. It's called All Things One Place. Let me let me double check if I'm uh, calling the name right. Yeah, it's it's All Things One Place. And you know, I I usually don't shout out other channels because we're quite small. And honestly, 
Um, what am I trying to do here? But it, it really feels like the information that this guy is putting out deserves some recognition because he's been testing USB-C cables, USB power banks, and um, wall adapters, variety of different manufacturers, and he's putting all of his findings in an easy to digest video and on an easy to digest spreadsheet where you can compare things that are quite useful if you're actually trying to find the best bang for the buck for the features that you're actually looking for. So if you want a, a cable that, you know, transfers uh, enough juice to charge your laptop whilst at the same time can transfer data at up to 10 gigabits a second or 20 gigabits a second. You can filter on his spreadsheet and you can find a direct link to Amazon. They're all affiliate links for him, nothing for me. Um, but it, I really feel like it's useful for, for uh, the average Joe that just wants to find a cable that will work for his needs. And uh, I've learned a lot from him and hopefully you will too. But um, yeah, USB-C is a mess and it's only gonna get messier before it gets better and uh, if you ask me uh, that sucks but uh, hopefully you'll learn something today and you've learned some about some of these um, mistakes and uh, confusion that's fueled by companies that uh, try to profit from misinformation and confusion of people okay hopefully you've had a good day and um, it's gonna get better from now after this video hopefully okay um, have a lovely one and um, yeah bye